What's good, family? Brodrin. Yeah, man. It's uh, Wednesday, September the 25th. We are officially in the fall. And I'm up here. We're in the fall. Before the fall of the United States. Estados Unidos. But yeah, man. I'm up here chilling. And did something different than I usually ever do. I'm up here at the park uh, in the morning at like 11 or something. What is it? 11, quarter past 11. I never do this. I usually, for some reason, I come to the park in the afternoons. But today I felt compelled to just come on up here and be in chill mode. And uh, something really cool happened the other day. One of my... Uh, well, say friend of a neighbor came up to me and asked me, well, you know, I said, hey, how you doing? She said, hey, how you doing? And she says, your name, you know, whatever she asked. I was like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, whatever. And then the broad uh, ended up uh, sending me a friend request on Facebook. So I was like, dang, that was weird. Because I was just literally thinking like, well, if this, uh, I was like, this chick cute. It's a black chick, you know, and she like unordinarily uh, cute for an older black chick. And I was like, ah, whatever. A lot of energy. And she more like slutty looking and stuff, but she was still into it, brother. But so she added me. I was like, oh, shoot. Dang, I was literally just thinking about that literally like two minutes before it happened. And uh, I was like, hey. So she, I didn't think she was going to send me no requests on her Facebook, but I was like, hey. The other day, a couple other chicks hit me up, like, about three weeks ago. One chick and then another one, like, last week, uh, hit me up on her Facebook. They hit my cousin up, and uh, I guess I was on his friend's, you know, list and stuff. I said, oh, hey, it's the season. It's the fall. It must be my season for... B dubs, but anyways, one of them was fat, two of them, one of them was uh, uh separated, you know. What I mean, and I don't deal with separated chicks, but it, cute though, too cute. The other one fat, but you know, I told her, man, you, you overweight, but you know, whatever, just hit me up later. But I really I don't even want these chicks, but I was thinking about this, man, uh, and even on the dating site chicks be hitting me up but it don't be like what a woman get a woman get dozens maybe a day i get maybe three something like that four but i ain't i'm not approaching these chicks in regular life or uh on the internet so I, what i came to conclusion is that and I, I look at these chicks tattoo titties some of them got tattoos on their ch you know different parts of their body when you look at a tattoo the tattoo is a, it's an indicator this woman's damaged goods. But also, you look at a tattoo, a tattoo that means that it's a red flag completely. And then you look at the hair. I mean, these bras are beat up, degenerate, used, and they 304s. And I'm not the type of dude to play simp and clean up a chick. Uh, you know, I, I clean her up and tell and direct her and guide her. But so far as cleaning her up, so this will be my wife, and just we'll 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 be together forever. And and and, and no, I mean, you know, if you you were a woman, and she in this American society, very likely she gonna have a body count, and she gonna be used like a used car. And now I come to the conclusion, well, hey, like the video I did previously, uh, concubinus maximus. <laughs> concubinus maximus you know <laughs> her maximum level most of these women maximum level that they can ever really be realistically looked at by men self-respected men is a concubine maximus a maximum level is concubine and ain't nothing wrong with it uh, she just you know she just your, your, your woman, you know what I mean, for right now, until the winds blow her away and she wants to be somebody else's woman or the next dude, the next dude, the next dude. So it's like I don't come to a conclusion, having the knowledge of all these different things, 
women with high body counts and red flags really can't uh, pair bond and they have problems attaching to a man and stuff. And number two, the majority, if you're going to deal with women in America, the majority of them ain't no virgins and they're not raised to be wives. They raised to be feminists, which are whores. And, you know, they might. But still, somehow I was thinking about two, two things, three things. Well, three examples. Two of them uh, was with, with a horse in the scriptures, and one of them was with a virtuous woman. And this is what my main thing saying in this video is this. If you deal with the majority of women, most of them is not modest. They're not raised to be wives. They're not raised to be, like, domesticated. You know, let's say Western women. They're not raised to be domesticated and do domestic stuff, cooking, cleaning, and serving a man, and being an actual wife, which a wife... Yeah, you know I mean, is a, a servant. When you look at Proverbs 30, 31, excuse me, talking about a virtuous woman, she cook clean. Well, not an example, but she she bought a business of her husband and making her husband look good. And she's dutiful, dutiful towards the end of so that her family can be built up. His household can be built up. And she's an intricate tool, an important tool to his uh his house his ki his kids going to be well fed and and look good and he going to be looking good in front of his colleagues and his peers because he has a woman see a woman basically is a trophy a woman is a wife is a trophy a trophy is his glory right you 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 know you win this sporting event the super bowl you get the super bowl trophy and it's a it's a sign that you have won or you won a Super Bowl, you get a Super Bowl ring. It's a sign and a trophy that you have achieved X. You have achieved this, you know, whatever. Now, a woman is uh, the glory of a man, the trophy of a man, whether it be to glory or whether it be to dishonor, whether it be to honor. She's an honorable female and she will honor you and in front of your peers and stuff. They, you will know, like, all right, this is an honorable female, and your peers be like, all right, you got a good woman. So you got the virtuous woman in Proverbs 31 who's a diligent in her efforts to build up her husband and the family and her name, his name, and not to, uh, you know, dismantle his name. And, you know, that's a virtuous woman. But your average a feminist woman, she not caring nothing about no family. She ain't caring nothing about building a man's name. She ain't caring nothing about how she walk around in he these here streets. She not caring. I mean, come on, man. Your average American woman don't give a damn about the man. She don't care nothing. If she look at him as a, a servant. She look at him as her servant. So the whole dynamic of male female interaction is so is literally 180. It's 180 degrees from what it's supposed to be. She's supposed to be serving, bowing down, helping out in whatever way that the men want her to help out. No, that's the problem. So you know what I came to the conclusion, that's one example, a virtuous woman. No, I ain't saying virgin. You can have a woman who got a body count, but now you she like you and you have flipped her around. And say, look, this if you want to deal with me, you going these are your rules and regulations. I know you've been out here doing your thing, streets, and you got all these male friends. Uh, this is the rules and regulations. If you want to deal, you have the opportunity to be my woman. Now, here it is. Boom, 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 boom. Whatever, you know, no male friends. You ain't gonna have no Instagram. All day naps is gone. You might change up how she look instead of wearing you know tight whole clothes have her go buy some different clothes that more so represent you yeah sure the woman might re she probably gonna rebel but it depends her submissiveness is not socially constructed like say in a patriarchal country her submissiveness in this country of america is predicated upon her desire for you so the more she like you the more she go bow down to you so you know while she with you <laughs> While she chooses to be with you, uh, uh, you lay it down and tell her well, this is what it is. You got to be dressing like make her in your image of what you want her to be. If you really want a relationship with me, this is what you got to do. This, that, and the other. You know what I mean? 
and lay your rules down and if she with it then she can be a useful uh helper in your life bringing you to glory and honor as opposed to dishonor see like the whole thing of like pursuing women see you when you pursue women you she got the leverage and the power you can't really put none on her demands in this because you don't want to pursue her you don't have the power when you she pursue you you have the power and you can make all kind of cool demands i want you to dress like this i want you to do this why is she doing that because she perceive you as the prize because when people say uh is the man a wo- man a prize or the woman a prize you know what i mean i think it's situational and r- relationship based on who pursued who and who's in the power seat in that specific relationship because if the man views the woman as the prize then he gonna be bowing down and simping it which is why you have in america a, a high level of a number of simps and stuff because men are socialized to look at women as the prize and women are socialized to look at themselves as the prize and men as servants so this the discipline in dealing with women you there's no sense in pursuing them and you know you just always have to be in the value position. She got to look at you as like, damn, I don't want to lose this dude. You know what I mean? And that's that's the only way this stuff works. You don't, you don't have, it's America, man. You don't have no social construct that punishes women for being out of pocket. And you don't have a social construct that punishes women for divorces and having high body counts. The only leverage primarily I can see a man have in this setup is the leverage of whether or not the woman... Uh, uh, has a deep desire for that dude or not. Other than that, you ain't got no legal leverage. You know, it's, it's they got swarms and swarms of simps. They got co-signing other feminist whore tattooed redhead girlfriends who co-sign all their BS. Only leverage I see in this place is that the woman like you and has a deep desire for you. Other than that, and she see you as a prize. Other than that, you ain't really got no leverage. So it it makes zero sense to me understanding female psychology and and understanding supply and demand in the power position. It makes no sense to me to pursue women. I mean, it's one. I went in the grocery store the other day. It was it was my type of chick, bro. Mixed looking, long curly hair. Uh, long nappy curly but it wasn't nappy nappy tight naps it was like curly I was like whoo like Puerto Rican type it was all this hair bro all this hair I was like it was, whoo. and she was like light skinned uh, mixed looking I was like oh bro and I, I was like looking at her trying to get see if she was giving me eye contact but she ain't give me none of that so I was like man well you know my instinct is like yo what up shoddy you know, you want it, so you go get it, right? But you got to have discipline and understand that he who is pursued, he or she who is pursued is the one with the power. So I was like, all right, well. But it was still, when she was walking past the other chicks, I was like, man, these other chicks failed in comparison. This was all, she was skinny. You know, she's a really, she was like a, uh, she had makeup on, so I give her like an eight. Yeah, I don't know how she actually looked without the makeup. She was probably, I don't know. But my point is that it was a beautiful broad. And uh, even then, you got to have self-discipline to not hit on the chick. You know, like, you don't let women complain. And men don't hit on us anymore. They don't approach us anymore. That's a good, I applaud men for not approaching women. Because in reality, I seen this video when this dude was working out in the gym, white dude. And this white chick uh, pursued him twice. I think one time he was like, no, nah. he she pursued him, said, hi, I just want to see how you're doing. And he was like, I'm, I'm working out. He, he was like, <laughs> she, he looked at her as unattractive. And so he was being pursued. Therefore, he's the prize. He rejected her first time. It was some other day. She, she came up to him again in the gym. And he was like, look, I, I've told you the other time, like, 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 you're not my type, like, you know, you, you don't look good. He, he was just talking to chick out. It's some skinny little white chick. I ain't see how she looked, but her whole thing was like, I'm about to go hit, I'm about to shoot my shot. That's what it was. She said, shoot my shot. So a woman shooting her shot. Women ain't used to getting rejected, man. These American women, bro. These women sit 
at the throne and they sit at ease having dozens of simps and tricks approaching them. So it, the, the power dynamic, he was like, yo, yo, I mean, I told you last time, like, I'm not interested. You know, you're not my type. You're not really attractive. You know, trying to be nice. And so she's like, okay. And she like walked around her tip, walked away with her tail between her legs. But me, I looked at it as like, you know what? How can this bra be of use to me in service? You know, but still, man, if the chick is unattractive to you, uh, I mean, you know, if she really choosing up like that, she still could be of some kind of use money uh maybe have you know some kind of a woman a woman i i've because i used to delete broads from the uh oh like oh she fat i still do that but and i don't be no all no good looking chicks hit me up man maybe some is chunky and all that but I, I now i'm like you know what maybe i can use this broad and she could be some kind of benefit to me she motivated she done went through all this scrolling and, and this chick damn near stalked me you know, she did stalk me. So I'm like, all right, I gave her my number. I like stalkers who come after you and stuff. I don't see nothing wrong with female stalkers as long as they ain't doing. I told her you can swing through, but you got to call first. Don't just uh, swing through. I don't like all that. You know, uh, fatal attraction ism. You know what I mean? I don't like all that. But I mean, you know, men don't, uh, we don't usually get chicks just hitting on us like that regularly. But a woman, even if she fat, she does get a lot of attention. So uh, my point is that instead of just throwing a broad away just because you're not attracted to her, she might be of some value and some use to you. And if she becomes a liability, hey, then you separate yourself. But I look at it. I was, that's the first example with um, the Proverbs 31 woman. And my main point, brothers, is that in this society – you know, you might not get, uh, let's put it like this. You might not get no virgin that's a 10, that's in shape and raised by her father in a <laughs> patriarchal construct. And you might not get that. You might, but you might not. It's not a lot of women that's in shape like that. You go to the Philippines, all right, they're more raised to be, you know, <laughs> wives. Not here, though. So you, if you're going to deal with women here, this is a good philosophy to have anywhere. What use and value can I get from this woman and how can she help my freaking life? And if she can't, she has no real reason to be in my life. If she's difficult and always arguing and you have this, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like an energy vampirism going on. I guess a few people I interact, I'm like, hey man, every time you come around, it's like, the energy, I feel bad. The ener- like I feel bad after this interaction. The energy is like it's 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 never ending uh mosquitoes sucking from me. You know what I mean? It's like a task to be in the presence of this person. So I don't want nobody like that. So that's a liability, which is why I limit my interaction with, with those particular individuals. On to the other examples. In the scripture you had uh Rahab the harlot. Rehab. I think she was the one when the children of Israel were going into and he had another, uh, I forgot her name, but she helped Paul uh, and I think uh, Silas in the Old Testament and the New Testament. These were both whores that um, were helpful to the men in the Most High. So you have some raggedy chicks just because they raggedy don't mean they don't have value, uh, use, utility for you. That could be useful if their mind is right. If they if they high body count and, and wretched and they got a bad attitude, that's like double, yo. That's double bad. You know what I mean? But you had uh, Rahab the harlot. The children of Israel were going into the promised land, spying it out and stuff. And uh, what was it? Caleb and um, Joshua? I think Caleb and Joshua were like the spies going into the land. I think it was... 10 other ones they were going into the land and stuff and it's like yo you know just spying out the place what we gonna do we gonna do this we gonna take that and it was this whole she uh rahab i believe her name was so all these broads even when the messiah was talking to that one samaritan woman she had a high body count for that day anyways and so but she was still of some value by her body count 
other dudes knew her and the <laughs> the gospel spread by her running her mouth and other dudes already knew what uh, quality she already had a network of dudes basically and she told the network of dudes what what uh, Yahshua had said to her the Messiah and uh, they was like what for real yeah, so, you know, so she had her, you never know what kind of network she might have, like some networks, uh, business dudes that can help you. You know, these women be network, man. Like even in a, say a bar or a club, she can get, have access to powerful men that you might not have. You know what I mean? You can use these bras, man. You know what I mean? They'll be using men. So if this woman like you, but she, she might be able to help you in your business, man, help you in some kind of way. Like it ain't just all sexual. You got to ask this bro, what use and value, you know, what, 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 all right. So maybe she, uh, got a business contact or something and you end up hooking up, uh, uh, a part you trying to do this, but you, and she like, yo, well, I know this one person like that. He can help you out. You know what I mean? And you link in through her, and her desire for you, she want to see you uh, succeed and make you happy. So you can, you know what I mean, utilize her networks. And, and also, <laughs> I forgot about that. But like, say, if she really liking you or whatever, you can use her, uh, use the pre-selection, you know what I mean? And she take a photo with you and all that. And so now, you know what I mean, she, since she look good, you take a photo with her. You know what I mean? Put it on your social media. Then you get more clout. You know what I mean? You never know. What I'm saying is like, just because she got... No, nah, I mean, be smart about how you move and, and all that. I'm just saying that don't throw the broad away just because she might not look good or, uh, you know, this or that. I mean, in reality, the chick might have some value that you can uh, benefit off of. I mean, think about it, man. These bras have had so many more experiences than your average man I have. Therefore, through those experiences, they have more links and connections. And as long as these links and connections are not liabilities and uh, uh, damaging to you, hey man, utilize uh, I, I'm guilty of that man, throwing chicks away. Uh, but, you know, I was just looking at, oh, do I really want this woman in my life? But then I'm, now I'm thinking like, uh, give her a chance if she cool how can she benefit me you know what I mean you know it's all kind of women have links and connections that we necessarily don't have because you know they be able to network and all this other kind of stuff you know the average chick gonna have way more people on her social media way more links and connections you know people want to network with chicks you know so I was just thinking about all the different ways a, a chick can benefit you not just you know, uh, relieving yourself sexually, you know what I mean? But, you know what I mean? You got to think about all the different ways this woman can be utilized by you and benefit you. If she really like you, she going to do whatever, you know, is necessary to like make you happy. That's only if she like you. If she don't, she gonna be, it's going to be the 180 reverse. She's going to be looking like, how can you make me happy? So you have Rahab the heart that I believe, was it Rahab? I forgot her name, man. It, 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 I know it's Rahab, but I, I don't remember if it's the one that helped Paul or the one that helped uh, uh, Joshua and Caleb. But nevertheless, it's a similar situation. Woman, a whore got a whole bunch of links and connections, you know what I mean, to a bunch of different dudes, whether dude rich, whether dude's connected, you know. She she got access to them dudes because basically she a hoe. Like, what, uh, what was it, strippers? Like, say... You'll see it. I said, what movie? I said, you'll see that from time to time. Like, what movie? Oh, that was Wag the Dog. Let's give you this quick example. In Wag the Dog, they used a woman to get to this senator. I think it was a senator or something. And they used the woman in order to get information. And women have always been used as tools uh, to uh, get at and, and, and subvert and, and uh, get at dudes. So a man's weakness for a woman whether it be rich or poor, you know what I mean? If a man is able to uh, work this woman, just like, for example, you have a woman who look good and all that, and but it's some dude out there behind her uh, uh, causing, uh, you know, causing her to go 
you know, robbed a dude. Like, say, with the passport bros, you get some of these hoes out here who uh, is set trapping dudes. And, and they can, the best way to hit a lick is have some good looking woman out there doing, a, you know, seduction and get the dude, the, the mark, get the mark, uh, you know, webbed in and trapped up. So that's why they do it. Like, say, with even cats that have been. You know, went to, and even more so locally here in America. Men have always been caught up by women who are uh, trapped by some dude, in, you know, behind her in the back of the scene somewhere, using the chick as a way to, you know, sub, uh, subvert men. So, like, whether it be like here in America whether and abroad, whether they get drugged here locally or abroad and robbed for what they got, that happens a lot here. Dudes getting, you know, drugged, robbed. Or, you know what I mean, saying you always use a setup chick. So when my point is that uh, you don't want no setup chick, but my point is that because women's links and connection to this world, if you're trying to, you know, prosper and stuff, and you got a woman who uh, is really into you, you can use this broad uh, for the purposes of your financial elevation. You know what I mean? So don't just throw away because she might have links and access and long as she ain't no liability. That's my main point. Long as she ain't no liability, look at other a- avenues that you could benefit from this woman. So uh, the children of Israel, they, I think that that pr- uh, prostitute, she ended up uh, Rahab, I believe. She uh, was like, basically the children of Israel was coming into the land to destroy the inhabitants thereof and to win the victory and to take the land. But they had to spy out the land to make sure this, that, and the other. So uh, while they were spying out the land, I guess the the enemies had heard that, you know, the children of Israel spies was there and they started hunting the spies. So she ended up saying, uh, you know, uh, it was Joshua and Caleb went into the whole house for like, hey, you know, you know, what are we going to do? You know what I mean? You gonna, So the whole, she was like, Rahab was like, hey, you know, we know that y'all going to take this mug over. All I'm saying is that, so she linked in with the dudes, the men of Yah, because the men of Yah was gonna, is going to take over the place. But they was, she was trying to link in with them so that when the attack and the takeover take place, that her people and her brothers and cousins or whatever wouldn't be killed. So they are, she already knew. So she was, well, my point is that she was networked and linked in and she already knew that, uh, the Israelites is going to take this mug over. She just wanted to make sure that her people was going to be safe when it happens. So she got the blessing and the benefit of, uh, you know, uh, uh, being a good, useful utility female, for the mo- most highest men. So what I'm saying is you don't want to li- uh, look a uh, gift horse in the mouth just because this chick is ugly or she got a, she good looking, but she got a body count. Or, I mean, look at other ways as opposed to wifing this chick up. Look for other ways as to this chick's usefulness to you. She could be a blessing in the skies, man. I mean, you know, as long as they, she ain't no liability and hurting you, you know, like I had this, uh, this old white broad you know, she, man, she came through for me, but she don't look like nothing, but she continuously come through for me. If I need this, that, whatever, she cool. Uh, you know, I just talk to her here and there. Oh, oh, you know, she ain't perfect, but she a useful utility when I need her to brought in, you know, drop some bread in the brother's head. You know. I'm like, dang, and she pursued me. You know, I'm taking my walk. She came, you know, pull up, well, you know, how you doing? And that's one thing about them, uh, the white chicks, man, they be like, you're a nice looking black man, you know. Whereas a black woman be like, usually, man, you know, they ain't, they don't want to give up that power. But if it's a dude they really desire, then she throw all that crap out the way. You know, cause, see, women don't like getting rejected. And, and number two, women in America have no real concept of, like, the man being the prize. <laughs> like, I was listening to some black chicks. What'd she say? But what she said, she said, uh, American black women have, are not trained to look at a man as the prize and something like that. And they called her a pick me, you know what I mean? But she was like, we looked at ourselves. She was like, black women is looked to, uh, they're not really 
raised by their mothers and stuff to be wives and stuff. They raised to be educated and stuff and to pursue career and pursue their own like life and all that. So, oh yeah, 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 yeah. This, this was a cool black chick and she was talking about defending the, she was defending, black American chick. She was defending passport bros and stuff and she was like, you know, that's the problem with black women is that when they not raised, and this is a, a pretty sister, darker skin, eh, brown skin, and she was like, we not raised to be uh, wives. And she was just honest. And it was cool to hear them say it about themselves. When we said, oh, you hate black women. You know, oh, you, you, who hurt you? Your mama, you hate your mama, you know. But when you got their own, I mean, this is logical, man. It's common sense. You're not raised to be a wife. You're not caring about a man's desires and build a family and submitting and all that, cooking, cleaning. You're not raised to do this stuff. So, and she was like, where in other women in other uh, countries, they are raised to be. So, you know, they are raised to be actual wives. So, you know, it's, um, my point is, even though she ain't been raised to be a wife, don't mean you just, you, you need to just throw her away. She might be of uh, some other value to you. And that's something I was thinking about. Like, I think about even that chick that was following me around in the grocery store. Like, dang, I probably could have used that broad. And I seen her, I didn't even know that she literally is one of my neighbors. Like, she literally is like three minutes walking from me. I didn't know that because I seen her in her car. I was like, oh, shoot. And I'm like, maybe, like, with these chicks, they be they be using Instagram uh, locator and all that and, and Facebook locator and this dude pop up in the feed and they be simping man for certain dudes though but they uh i don't i don't even keep my location on man you know what i mean I, I don't like facebook knowing everywhere i'm at you know i turn that location off but that don't mean that they can't still find out and stuff you know that don't mean just because you turn it off that it's actually off you know but anyway because i'm in her algorithm you know what i mean I didn't even know that broad. I'm like, dang, that would make sense. Because these chicks, man, they be, they be, you know, I, if they like a dude, they will stalk the dude. You know, I know that because I like stalker. I like female stalkers. But I'm like, why you, you know, why didn't you just ask me for my number? Why you have to go behind and just ask me, is that my name? And then do a, 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 do it the long way. I was just having a regular conversation with her. Hey, how you doing? Nah. Yeah, cool. Blah, blah. All right, have a good one. And that was it. I thought it was the end of it. And I felt pretty good. It was an ego boost, no question. But uh, but see, women, when they uh, pursuing or hunting a dude, they be, they be knowing what's what. They be acting, you know, oh, I don't need a man, all that. But they know a certain dude that they like, they going to pursue him. And that's why I don't have no desire to pursue women. It's no... Power in it. There's no sense in it. I can get her. I can convince. If all you want is just the, the panties, you know what I mean, and just sexual experience, I mean, do what you got to do, man. But if you want the power in dealing with a woman, it's, it's zero sense in pursuing a woman. So that was the one example. The lady, uh, Rahab, she was a, a prostitute. She was like, look, y'all going to win and y'all going to take over this land. So let's make this agreement that when you do take over the land, uh, Everybody that's, you know, in my house or whatever, that you ain't going to kill. And that was the covenant agreement. They agreed to it. So when the children of Israel actually did go into the land, took the land, slaughtered the inhabitants, they, uh, she was cool. Even though she was a whole, she was righteous in that particular instance. She was a good woman in that um, she, oh, that's one thing. Like she, uh, she hid the men of, of God. She hid them from their pursuers. There were people were pursuing Joseph, uh, uh, Joshua and Caleb. And, you know, they, uh, they was hunting them, trying to kill them so that they couldn't, you know, cause they knew that they were spies in the land. So that's what I'm saying. And the same thing similarly happened to, uh, Paul and I think Silas and, uh, in the new Testament, another whore, you know what I mean? She was like protecting the men of Yah and uh, she received a blessing behind that, even though, yeah, she ain't no righteous woman because clearly she a prostitute. But that just because a woman, you know, it might be trash. I ain't gonna say trash. Might be low level. Don't mean that you can't get no utility out of. So I just wanted to drop that. Just something I was thinking about.
Cause now I look at it, man. I should have. Uh, more I look at it, I should have gave that chick a chance. The chick with a, the single mother chick, black chick. I don't know what what links and connection this woman got. How could she benefit my life? I was just like, eh, she got a kid. Eh, I'm out. She was cute. She was, you know, nice face structure, cute older black chick. But I was like, eh, eh, eh. But then I'm thinking like, you know what? I don't really, because what I was thinking is like, I don't really, I don't, I don't it's, it, the, the, because I have matured since you know, a few weeks ago, right? <laughs> but as I sit down, down and ponder this stuff, all these, most of these women are hoes and most of them is used, most of them is not virgins, most of them is, ta- you know, I ain't gonna say tattoo, but they're, they're, they're red flags, they got multiple red flags. So, do you like not deal with them, which is ideal? But if you're gonna deal with them, benefit off of them. You know, she might give you some money, or she might have a network to a certain this and that. And even getting money from a female ain't even about if you need it or not. The point is, women love money, and if she's willing to submit and give you her money, that's a, a power dynamic, man. You know, it, it, yeah, man, it's all kind of cool things you can do, man. So. You know, servants, man. You know, <laughs> I like having female servants, man. Um, but don't, yeah, I'm like, man, now I look at it. I should have just, uh, you know, I should have just, uh, I'll probably see her in there. Yeah, I don't really care. But the point is, I could, you know, who knows what network she got. If, if you know, I, I'm just thinking of it like the big picture now. Most of these women is not marriageable material so far as, two things one most of these women are not virgins thus wife 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 number two this ain't the time to really be all, all linked in and this is my wife and i'm gonna hold on to her forever as even scripture tell you that the women those that have wives in these times especially now bro with all these wars and rumors of wars and terrorist attacks that the state of ear of the Jewish people just committed with all these cell phones and pages, dude. This all, no, brother, is this really the time to take any of these people serious? Whether she be a virgin wife and you've been married for fifty two years, yeah, you love her and she done um, kicked in. But the reality is, in this time of war and civil war looming in America, all these different. Um, it's multiple landmines. You got, you know, you got the economy. You got, you know, who, who you got the election. Who's going to be voting in? You got the war with China that's looming. You got the war with, you got the dollar. The, the world is on the trip of de-dollarization. It's like you got the dollar itself is not the world reserve currency no more. Oh, I would say, I would say it is the world currency, but it's not uh, the petrodollar. Excuse me. It's not, <laughs> that was the main thing that gave America its power. Uh, what they say, uh, trade wars, and, and when all else fails, they take you to war. Gerald Salenti. And America's failing, and, and that's why they <laughs> taking America to war. The Ukraine situation, that you could be some, some okie doke, uh, wag the dog, false flag with that. You know, oh, Russia did this. Oh, I, I, I see some happening before the election. I mean, hey, man, hey, hey, if you look at it, two assassination attempts, that happened. That's the something. What happened if Trump got deleted, bro? Come on, bro. Bro, this place would be on fire. So it's like all kind of in this. Oh, man, it's a lot of stuff going on, man. The the possible nuclear war and not even nuclear war with Russia. If you think about the uh, the hyper, it's called hypersonic missiles and stuff that fly faster as a plane flying overhead. It fly faster and cannot be shot down, bro. Russia and China and North Korea have hypersonic and Iran have hypersonic missiles that cannot be shot down. They, it's so, so, it's, a, it, it's so much. Get so much going on, bro. It's not really the time to be taking like all in. You you get your woman and you take, you know, 
do what you gotta do, be what you wanna, et cetera, et cetera. But man, this ain't the time to really be all in. You know what I mean? For your woman, you know what I mean, all that, man. Because the reality, man, things could escalate. It's just a time of war, man. It's Ezra, second Ezra fifteen and sixteen. It's a time of war, man. And this in this country is the one that's pushing the war throughout the world, funding the wars, funding the world with the Jewish people in uh, uh, the la- the state of Israel. Many would say the terrorist state. So based on the acts of terrorism and genocide. But this is the the this is who these people is, man. But it, but this is this is in the scriptures that this stuff gonna happen. So I feel peace, you know what I mean. But my point is that all this stuff going on, why why take any of these women seriously? That's just my main point of this video is why take any of these women seriously? Are they worthy to be taken seriously? Like you look at what's going on in Ukraine, half of their population around that is is been left the country. Or, or killed or whatever. Half. It was at 40 million. Now it's like 21 million or something. Based on how they track people and stuff. Half your country gone, bro. Left the country. Fled to America and different parts of the world. Into Europe. Because of the war with Russia and uh, 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 Ukraine that America's funding. So... You think the women over there are strong, independent, boss babes? See, what I'm saying is that when hard times come, strong, independent, boss babe chick don't exist. Women become more desperate. Women become, all of a sudden, they get pickup game. They know how to talk to men. They know how to approach men all of a sudden. When difficulties come, all of a sudden, and, and that whole cloak, when, when, set, when, when vagina become less valued, well, it become down to the value that it is, actually. It's not really all that important. Think about it. Most one of the most wonderful questions. What can a man you to bring a woman like you need to? This dude need to marry him, but all the rest of the dudes they didn't have to marry this female. The one of the most wonderful questions is, what can this what can this woman give me that other multiple dudes ain't already got for free? What can this woman give me that other multiple dudes ain't already had for free? And, and, and she can't. I seen uh, a few. Let me see. If you ask the chick that question, you know she she ain't got nothing that she can give you that she ain't already gave to other dudes. Oh, she can give you children. Oh, okay. Through the womb of. A, a, a womb that's been used by everybody for free or for a purchase price so you want your child like that you actually care about to issue forth from the womb of a woman that had a hundred bodies bro like think about what I'm saying this is not the time to really take these bras seriously and when you think about it how you gonna take somebody seriously these women don't even take themselves seriously Cause if they took themselves seriously, they would be virgins and hold until they actually get married and give that her body is her main thing that she can give to a man. And if she done gave her body for a purchase price of you know twenty dudes and other dudes that just made her tingle, you know another fifty dudes, or it was a, a game or a part of a dare, and she did you know ten dudes at one one night. How is this woman somebody you want to actually produce your children with? You can't take this chick seriously, man. So, you know, I'm just I'm just thinking about this stuff. In the times we in now, is this really the time to really take these people seriously, man? You know, I mean, think about it, man. If it be civil war, man, you might have to leave your crib and, and brr, brr, this stuff stuff going on in Ukraine, going over here where they bombing and terrorist attacks happen over here and you can't stay in your neighborhood like you might have to be on the road you might have to you know grab your uh grab your self-defense mechanism and you might have to hit the road and your woman might be like no i know it going wigging out going crazy like that chick on the road movie 
and, and like I said, the streets just be calling these chicks. It'd be like, come to me. You know what I mean? The streets be calling and magnetizing these chicks. On a road movie, she was like, it's two, two movies. One was that one movie uh, I just recently saw. Dog. She always got to go, man. She got to go. I got to go. I got to go. She is, is she women that's left their own devices, you know, women who ain't got no instructions headed for self destruction. The streets keep calling. She gonna get magnetized to the streets. That's her default position. So, oh, like on a road movie, the woman left her husband. She's, I, I gotta go. I, I just gotta go. He's like, you don't have to go. Just stay with me one more night. She was like, no, no, I, I gotta go. I, I gotta go. So he just walked off into the darkness, never to be seen ever again. In the other movie, uh, Li- Limitless, Limitless. Well, that's a smaller example. Uh, the dude's ex-wife. He, he was like, let's let's talk about it. No, no, I, I gotta go. I, I gotta go. The woman's uh, default position is about. Uh, I got to go. I got to go to these streets. So that being the case, man, you can't take these bro. You can't take these bro seriously, man. And this kind of setup in these times, man, these times we in, man. Sh- so all the desperation of men, like not being able to get women and stuff because women are so proud and arrogant and, and vagina in this country is looked upon as something that is the prize like you know is women are elevated prideful mind states and men are broken down by the society and stuff this this gonna cease bro it's not gonna exist no more feminism don't exist in a wartime construct in a wartime situation feminism don't exist feminism and all that only exists well, state-sponsored feminism. When the state is going in a state of war, state-sponsored feminism don't work no more. So that's my main thing, man. I was in this kind of construct. These women have relegated themselves to basically high body count harlots who have uh, not really. They have a diminished capacity to to pair bond and, and to link up with the man that actually care about them. And, and ha- you know, other than that, so because of this, because this is the way it is, and if you're going to deal with a woman, don't just, number one, don't just dis- dismiss the chick. She might be of some value to you. But number uh, two, don't be looking at her like, oh, this is my woman forever. I'm going to hold on. This dude's still getting legally married in this mug. I'm not going to celebrate that. I'm not going to celebrate a man legally getting married in this construct. Neither am I going to celebrate a, a, a man, you know, uh, being all into his female. We hold on. We'll do this forever. We're, we're here to, man, and forever, bro. Look at it. We on a, we on a, we, we, we like, we like on, we, we are in like a state of everything is on the edge, man, and the wind's blowing kind of thing. It like like a, a dude, America's like a dude teetering on the ledge. I want to jump. I'm going to jump. Oh, no, I'm not going to jump. I'm going to jump. But then you got the wind that blows. Oh, shoot, I'm about to fall. Oh. I seen a video with this. Uh, this is similar to the, the state of being of affairs. I seen this cat. Uh, what was it? He was at some kind of. It was a cat that was in a stadium and it was hanging on to like this flag. And it was like a. Uh, uh, I don't even know how the cat got in there, but he was in this stadium, like a soccer game or whatever. And he was holding on to this flag, trying to hold on like this rope or whatever. And people tried to grab the cat, but he ended up falling. And so the cat ended up falling uh, um, down and stuff. And the people caught the cat. So they, they, everybody was in the stadium was celebrating. Yeah! Because the cat was trying to hold on to this flag or rope or something, but his, his strength got weak. And it was some wind blowing and, you know, he ended up falling. Was, right? But that's just kind of like the state of America. It's on the edge. It's weak. It's holding on by a nail. You know what I mean? And and is this the time you really want to be all into your woman kind of thing? It, it, nah, it's not, bro. Given the circumstances, given the environment, and given where we're at, this election here, all these different things that I mentioned, 
concubinus maximus, man. These chicks are maximum level that I see as concubine. Now I'm looking at it differently. I'm like, all right, even though she a used woman, she might be of some value to me. Don't just look at it like, oh, she, uh, well, I would just say how I look at it. Now I look at it like, hey, she might be of some value. She might be one of my concubines, but she got to bow down. See, when this stuff really go down, man, women ain't going to have no leverage like they do. The strong, independent, boss babe, female, white or black, whatever, it's not going to exist when you got civil war going on. We got that going on in uh, uh, the Ukraine. Where are these strong, independent boss babes? Female cops. I see videos where female cops got grabbed up and body slammed because she couldn't even get to her weapon. Look at the female uh, that was protecting Trump, the first uh, assassination attempt, fumbling her weapon and couldn't even put it back in a holster. That's all socially constructed BS. You know, you know what I mean? They got the social uh, construct of, all right, I can, uh, you know, I can be a strong, independent babe or I could be a police officer. Or I could be this and that because but they, that's all societally supported. Once the society crash, all that is just like a, a memory. <laughs> and then reality, gonna, brut, brutality and reality going to kick in. And that's where we're on the verge of. So these bronze, they're going to start pursuing, like scriptures say that seven women is going to pursue after a man. There's going to be multiple chicks, all that strong, independent, weave crap. Where are these chicks going to get their weaves from? You know, I, on a side note, i just seen a black chick with weave. Like, that's... What do chicks actually look like? How long is the actual hair? How far back are the actual hairlines? You know what I mean? Like, you don't really... Now you see these stupid looking... Uh, yeah, they take a little bit of their hair and, like, gel it down on the forehead. You know, like the two pieces, one on the left side, one on the other side. It looks stupid. You know. But anyways, chicks, ghetto chicks are doing that. But my point is, how, how long is their actual hair? Number two... Where are they going to get that weave from during the collapse? <laughs> Where are they going to get their makeup from? You know what I mean? You're going to have to see and how they going to clean themselves. Oof, gosh. Uh, and I, I had looked up where a lot of that weave come from. Uh, a lot of it is acrylic and um, what it, it, it's uh, artificial and stuff. So... But it still ha can have negative effects when it comes in long-term contact with human skin, you know. So, which a lot, why well, a lot of these chicks have bad scalp. But also, number two, the natural hair. A lot of them they say come from like India, Indonesia, and different countries. You know, those Asian chicks with the long hair that the women in America is shaming men for going to. You go to the Philippines because you can't have no strong women in your own country. Why would I want to get some uh, chick that's artificial? You getting a Brazilian butt lift, a BBL. Why not just go to Brazil and get a Brazilian chick with a natural butt and real actual long hair? So a lot of them chicks, they get they get their weeds from chicks that have sacrificed their hair literally to false gods, demons, in India and these different countries. And so, they, you know, they, it's like part of some kind of sacrificial ritual or whatever. And, and, and so that demonically charged hair is being sold and glued into these American bitches' heads. You know what I mean? <laughs> Without praying over the hair, nothing like, <laughs> nothing like that. So, so you got women who is being uh, influenced by whatever curse or, or, or demonic spirit that's on that hair, you know, it, it, it would explain some things why a lot of these American black women act so freaking out of their freaking minds and do such a the high level of degenerate things that they do. So that was just my side note on that. But all that being said, that being the case, look at these women, in my opinion, look at them for really what they have presented themselves to be. And if they really like you, then you get what you can out of them. And, you know, if she, I don't got no problem with a woman remaking a female into your image. 
You know what I mean? If she bow down and she really, really dedicated, you take a woman that got probably look, if she got tattoos, you know, you cover the tattoos. Up. She got a tattoo of another dude. I'm like, nah, nah, yeah, nah, I don't like that. You know, I, yeah, you know, that's him branding the chick. You know what I mean? So, but then is she really useful? I can't just say no because really, uh, hey, we can work her in a way that she'll earn some money. Whether it be in your business or you can with a female, you can use social media and all that, uh, and they all into that. So you can use her to make money on the social media and pay for her own tattoo removal. I don't want no chick that's gonna have no other dude's name on her and etched into her skin. You could do the tattoo removal, but uh, it's hard to take a female, a prostitute, seriously, and you should never do that. In reality, since the majority of these women have high body counts, they're prostitutes. And if the woman is an actual virgin, you still in this climate, do you really want to take her seriously, seriously, seriously like that? The answer to all that, in my opinion, is no. So, but that don't mean she ain't got no use and value. Still be a benefit to you. You know, as long as she ain't got no dude and the husband and all that. All, all this detrimental stuff to your health and, and life, you know what I mean? You know, you know. These chicks be running these husbands and boyfriends, and just because they, it's what I'm saying. You got to filter these broads. You know, I asked her, I said, You got a man or a husband? <sighs> well, yeah, but we separated. Like, bitch, why are you even contacting me? Cause? Why? Because there's no uh, threat to her, there's no threat of repercussions to her. So, and, and number two, she lives in a construct where most men is not going to ask her a question that I asked her. And most men ask no question. Like, oh, shoot. Yeah. Well, yeah. They'll never get a chick pursuing them. So, but I, I, I try to be a righteous dude, man. And I don't want to be cursed because I'm laying up with somebody else's woman, man. I need the most highest blessing upon me, man. I need all the help I can get, I can get in this mug, man. Y'all don't need no curse from the most high because I'm dealing with some ragtag bitch. I ain't got time for this stuff, man. Who's that? Uh, Sweet Brown. Anybody got time for that? <laughs> Anybody got time for that? They made a, that was funny. It was Sweet Brown or a Chocolate Brown or something. Anybody got time for that? <laughs> that was funny. Gold to Sweet Brown. Now, what was it? I forgot what. She, it was like, it was like, right, this is a side note. Y'all looked at, you know, that one dude, the uppercut, uh, what was they made three memes out of this. One was the uppercut dude, bus driver who uppercutted the uh the ratchet Sean Quisha uppercut <laughs> uppercutted the bitch and threw her off the off the bus. <laughs> like he was throwing a garbage bag off the bus, man. It was funny. He said, You going to jail now? Bah! They made a a a, a remake uh, that happened about what, seven years ago <laughs> seven years ago. And uh, that was funny. I was watching that with my mom and stuff, you know. He said, he going to jail now. He uppercutted the bitch and threw her off the bus. She was talking mad trash. Anyways, anyways, that's Sweet Brown. I forgot what Sweet Brown situation. And then the third one, uh, a dead giveaway. Yeah, yeah, y'all look that stupid crap. Oh, it was funny. Uh, the dude, uh, I forgot his name, but. He remind me of Sweet Brown. These all happened around you know, a few years ago. But anyways, anyways, anyway. Now, that's a side note. It ain't got nothing to do with this video, but I just was thinking about it. It's funny. And you say, you going to jail now? You uppercutted the bitch and threw her back to the streets from whence she came. <laughs> she came. Oh, uh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Um, uh, let's see. Where's my point? Yeah, but see, these, these chicks be having use. So you got to be, uh, you got to be creative. If you want the chick in your life, and this shit ain't no liability, be creative as to how you can use this broad. And, I, and I'm starting to look at it more like that. Now, hey, man, this broad, you know, this and that, she got these red flags, that red flag. But hey, she might still be a value and some use to a nigga. You understand me? So let me utilize this broad. And she might be able to plug in areas that I ain't able to. I, I mean, a woman, a woman, even if she ain't perfect, can still be of use to you. See, we got to start looking like this stuff like kings and, 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 and bosses and business owners. These broads, we should always look at that. We important, man. Female, sex is only as important as the 
the men are desperate. Sex from a woman is only as important as the men are desperate in that society. So in this society, American men are very desperate, and that's why such that's why even used ran through women is still at a, such a high premium here because of the supply supply and demand. The supply and demand is crazy because the supply and the de- uh, supply and demand dynamics are not being adhered to here in America, and this is what I mean by that. The supply of women in America is more women than it is men. So, natural the natural supply and demand um, ratios supposed to be that it, women supposed to be super desperate for men. Well, that's not the case here in America. The supply and demand dynamic is perverted and altered by the social programming of the female and the social programming programming men to be simps and weak and beta and weak and promoting women be alpha and strong willed and stuff and promoting that women be alter prostitutes choosing which dudes they want to be with and the dudes that you know what they said 80 20 rule 20 percent of the men i don't know if it's accurate but i'm just going i'm just going to use it 20 percent of the women excuse me 20 percent of the men get uh, chosen by 80 percent of the women and the rest of the 80 percent of the men just kind of you know like you know leftover scraps that you know like vultures fighting over the scraps after the lions have had their share kind of thing and that's kind of how it is man that's a matriarchy where women are promoted to be ultra sluts and, and go and do whoever and whatever they want to do that mean they gonna choose what they want. Oh, he tall. Oh, he look. He look good. <laughs> oh, he famous. Oh, he got swag. Oh, he had tattoos. So women gonna choose. <laughs> they gonna choose whatever the hell they want to choose. Whether she married or not, and whether she lead us do she. That's just the culture we live in. Eighty twenty rule. Eh, maybe it applies. Maybe it doesn't. They do say that around 70 percent of the men it was a black community is actually produced a majority of the children about 17 percent of the men so you know it's close to 80 20 whatever but anyways man that's my thought man even if the as long as she have the as long as she values you you can utilize her to your benefit and that's what i'm starting to look at now all right she don't look all that good but how can she benefit me how can i we, that's a king mind state you're you're a servant you have you look at the woman, you're a servant, and you have positioned yourself as the pursuer. You have positioned yourself that you value me and you need me and you want me. All right, now, in order to get me, or in order to have my presence, you know, <laughs> a woman say, oh, my presence is enough. Well, to simps and tricks and men who pursue you, yes, your presence is enough. But for the man that you want, your presence ain't enough. He don't give a damn about your presence. You could die uh, or get hit by a bus. He don't care. There's just another chick. That, I don't care about you. Like to do an example uh, with the white dude in the gym who's working out. You think he give a damn about that uh, white chick that pursued him presence? His, her, pre- <laughs> her presence annoyed him. He said, look, I told you before. <laughs> You know, I'm not interested in you. <laughs> Her presence annoyed him, but I'm sure that's see that's the dude that she pursued. Now, how many five, ten, fifteen, twenty dudes is pursuing her? So for those fifteen, twenty dudes that are pursuing her, her presence is enough. But for the dude she pursues and she desires, her presence is annoyance. You ain't nothing. So that's what you want to be in a power position, and being that. Uh, you want to be able to, you can call shots like that. You know, I mean, hey, you, how much money you got? Do this. Take me, you know, give me this. You know, do that. Cook for me. Clean my house. You know what I mean? Do this. You know, we gonna, it's all kind of cool stuff you can do when you're in a power position. This is the right position that a man is supposed to be in. Calling the shots. Yeah, having options. It's the right position. It's more women than it is men here, man. So... 
Anyways, brothers, like, share, and subscribe. I think I uh, covered everything, but this is not the time to be really taking women seriously like that, man. Even if you marry, not if you oh, you married for twenty years, thirty years. This is my woman. She'll never, never, never leave me, nigga. Please, in my show enough voice, nigga. Please, the last dragon. <laughs> that dude is a bully, man. Nigga, please. But, uh, and <laughs> hey, this dude showed up look like, uh, Chalk Sweet Brown. <laughs> oh, boy, what am I talking about? Uh, shoot. Forget what I was saying. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, we, you know, be in a power position, man, you know, uh, Dang, I forgot my point. <laughs> uh, but that's my whole point, man. You know, you shouldn't be in a position where you up here uh, uh, pursuing, pursuing women and, and bowing down and all that stuff, you know, beg, begging for your opportunity to be used by her and be a provider for a used up harlot. Let me help you. Let me, let me be the one. What was it? That song, like, who, who, T.I. made that song. You can have whatever you like. Sipping, man. You know, you don't want to be having the opportunity to be used by this female by being one of her protectors and providers. We ain't in no time for no protection and provision. These women are going to be bowing down soon, bro. They, they, they're really having a mentality of, of, of abundance. You know what I mean? Like, let's say with that, back to the example of the dude in the, in the gym. You, you know, her presence ain't enough, bro. Her presence, you know, if you're going to tolerate this woman being in your presence, then she need to uh, bring some substantial stuff to the table, whether you got money or whether she got a network of friends. And you might, you know, her 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 girlfriend might be wanting to be with you. And she got to be cool with that. You know, whatever your, you know, what you, hey, I mean, you know, she might have a girlfriend that look real pretty and she's single. All right, she could be on my team. You know what I mean? You know, it's all kind of maneuvers, man. My point is that women need to be in the right mind state of servitude, and they're not really like that here in America at all. But that's going to be situationally forced upon them as the society continues to crumble. But until then, forget pursuing these broad. Let them pursue you. Uh, you know, oh, that's what I'm saying. Like, men got we got to stop overvaluing women like that. You know, you go to, a, say, different countries, you got different women. <sighs> the whole dynamic of overvaluing vagina, man, this comes from a state of desperation. A lot of men ain't getting sex like that. And even if they marry, that's my main. Yes, back to my main point. My other point, even if this ain't really the time to be all super ultra dedicated to women like that. And, and, and Judge Mathis. That's the example I wanted. Well, you, I've been married for 20 years. My woman will never leave me. Well, look at Judge Mathis, man. 40 years married to this chick. Boop, I'm tired. She's 60 years old or whatever. Back here to these here streets right here. That's where she's trying to go back to the streets as a 60-year-old broad. I, I still got value. Man, come on. You can't have no kids. You've been ran through. You don't look as good as you. Like Women don't have a concept because see in America women don't really care about men they care about men they don't care about like being of value and use good use to a man they care about the money production capability of the man but they don't care about the man neither do they care about pleasing the man neither do they care about his well-being for the most part it's about he he's a good income generating dude number one number two he can physically protect me he, so he can provide and protect for me. That's all she care about. Yeah, you know I mean, she don't really. A lot of American women is very callous and very cold. And it's a monetary transaction kind of a thing. And this dude make the most money. The women love the money. But they don't necessarily love the dude. And not nah, just no love. They don't respect the dude. They respect the money. And they look at him as a nice income generating provider simp dude. You know, what I mean, it, you know, even look at Shaquille O'Neal, seven feet tall, all this prominence and all this, and his woman leave him for uh, some other dude, 
Why are you leaving Shaq, bro? The dude's multi-man. He's seven feet tall. Women, it's it's just the streets be calling, man. So if if a dude like that, seven feet tall, famous, super wealthy, one of the best centers ever in the history, it literally in the history of basketball, NBA, he can't hold his woman, bro. Come on, man. Come on, bro. It ain't a you thing, bro. It's a society thing. And because society is so wretched and unsupportive of men, is this a is this a society we need to be taking women seriously in? And I say no, man. So, anyways, easy come, easy go. Cop and blow. And just as dogs bark and cats meow. From the street she cometh into the street she shall return. The woman is just be magnetized and pulled to the street. She's probably going to leave, most likely. That being the case, whether it be your wife of 20 years or 30 or 40 years, ha, should you take this woman super seriously? Down me, you got a wife and just leave the chick. No, don't do that. She a good woman and she done put in work. Why would you leave that? But I'll say have the mentality and understand that she probably going to leave you. And in this society, in this time we in, we got to have more of a callous mindset than not to give a damn if she leave. Or at least not take it too hard. You know, because this is just part of female nature. And America promotes the dysfunctional attributes of female nature. So anyways, this is a more sobering kind of a... I'm just thinking about this stuff, man. Just thinking about this stuff. You know, get value out of her and, and, and she can help your life let her stick around for a while but if she become a hindrance well there's the door and from the streets she cometh and to the streets she shall return peace to your brothers like share and subscribe and if you want to support the channel go ahead and use the cash app in the description peace <laughs>